Hello everyone. So we are going to discuss on the formation and utilization of ketone bodies and ketoacidosis. So when these ketone bodies they are produced in our body, what is the reason why these ketone bodies they get produces or from where it get produces? These ketone bodies actually they get produces in our body basically from the metabolism of fats. Now we all know that the glucose are the basic unit of life to sustain a body it needs the glucose as a primary source of energy but when the body it is deprived of glucose then the body can utilize the stored fat this stored fat get metabolized to produce the ketone bodies and when the amount of the ketone bodies in the body it increases then the body it suffer from different pathophysiological conditions just like ketoacidosis so we are going to discuss on each and every aspect on the formation as well as the utilization of the ketone bodies as well as in the ketoacidosis so let's start so let's now discuss the basic introduction for this so first of all ketone bodies these are the metabolic products as i already told you which get produced in the body during the breakdown of the fatty acid. Moreover, what are the ketone bodies? Generally, the most commonly found ketone bodies in human body are the acetoacetate, acetone and beta-hydroxybutyrate. So combinedly, these three components, acetoacetate, acetone and beta-hydroxybutyrate, they are known as the ketone bodies of the human body. What is their concentration? Normal concentration. The normal concentration of ketone bodies in the human blood, it is 3 mg per 100 ml. Now, when they are produced, so generally when the fats, when the lipids, it gets oxidized in our body, these ketone bodies, they used to get produced. Moreover, you remember one thing that the ketone bodies actually, they cannot completely replace the glucose for the needs in the brain as because the brain human brain it basically depends on the glucose as a first or primary source of energy but when the body is under the condition of starvation when the body is under the condition of starvation at that time actually the brain also it adapt itself in such a way that it can utilize these ketone bodies so these are the structure of the basic ketone bodies the acetone acid, acetoacetic acid moreover beta hydroxybutyrate again if we continue then the basic definition of ketogenesis is the process of formation of ketone bodies all the process we are going to give you the details of the process for the ketogenesis but all the process including the formation of the three products it is known as the ketogenesis now when this ketogenesis occurs in the human body so ketogenesis actually occurs during the time of starvation when you are on fast or the body is deprived of food now what actually happens so generally when the body is deprived of food at the time the insulin secretion it will not be takes place in the human body so the low level of insulin actually in the human body the low level of insulin in the human body it actually releases the fatty acids it releases the fatty acid from the adipose tissue so these adipose tissues are generally found near around your abdomen so fatty acids are generally released from the adipose tissue and the process of ketogenesis actually takes place so what actually happens in the liver in the liver increased demand for the gluconeogenesis when the body it is deprived of glucose we know that the body will solely rely on the liver to start the process of gluconeogenesis gluconeogenesis is a process it is a basic process for generation of glucose from a non carbohydrate source so in the liver the increased demand for glucose neogenesis is actually results in the depletion of oxaloacetate and therefore 
in decreased capacity for TCA. And finally, this causes a rise in the level of acetyl coenzyme A. And we know that this acetyl coenzyme A is the substrate for the ketone body production. And moreover, the hydroxymethyl glutaryl coenzyme A, shortly it is known as HMG coenzyme A or HMG COA pathway, it is responsible for the production of the two basic ketone bodies in human body, which are acetoacetate and D3 hydroxy butyrate. Let's discuss the synthesis of the ketone bodies. So how these ketone bodies they generally actually generated in our body. So basically you can see in this diagram the first enzyme to be involved in the ketone body synthesis is the thiolase enzyme. This it is the same enzyme which is actually responsible for the cleavage step of beta oxidation. Moreover, now how it proceeds so in ketone body biosynthesis the thiolase enzyme actually it catalyzes the condensation of two molecules of acetyl coenzyme a which led to the formation of acetoacetyl coenzyme a the next enzyme you can see in this figure it is the hmg coenzyme a Shortly, it is actually the hydroxymethyl glutaryl coenzyme A synthase, which actually adds a third acetyl coenzyme A molecule to form beta hydroxy or B hydroxy B methyl glutaryl CoA. So it is actually abbreviated as HMG CoA. Now, this HMG CoA. It is a it is an important biocentric intermediate. However, in the mitochondria, it is only used for ketone body synthesis. The third enzyme, that is the HMG coenzyme A, lies. It releases an acetyl coenzyme A from the HMG CoA to form again the acetoacetate. The final enzyme in the ketone body synthesis is actually the beta or B hydroxy butyrate dehydrogenase, which actually reduces acetoacetate to beta hydroxy butyrate, the end product. The beta hydroxy butyrate dehydrogenase reaction has two functions basically. You should remember it has two functions. First of all, it stores the energy equivalent to an NADH in the ketone body for export to the tissue. I repeat, it stores the energy equivalent to an NADH in the ketone body for export to the tissue. The second function is it produces a more stable molecule. Acetoacetate is a beta ketoacid. We know that. And like many such compounds may simultaneously decarboxylate. The product of the decarboxylation reaction is the acetone. So this acetoacetate it get degraded into acetone and we all know that acetone is a volatile waste product and it is largely excreted via our lungs. Thus acetone bread it can be considered as a crude method for diagnosing the individual patient if he is suffering from untreated type 1 diabetes mellitus. So just see it once again. We are going to start with acetyl coenzyme A. Addition of one acetyl coenzyme A will occur to form acetoacetyl. Then 3 hydroxy 3 methyl glutaryl coenzyme A will form. Then again acetoacetate will form. From here, we are going to get the acetone and 3 hydroxy butyrate. Ketogenesis. So, what are the products? So, both the products, whatever it has formed, 
we have come to know that the beta hydroxybutyrate and acetoacetate both these products these are the organic products both of these are the organic products moreover it has been found that these products of the ketogenesis they are released in the protonated form in the human body they are released in the protonated form in the human body does these have the tendency to lower the pH of the blood means it may turn the pH of the blood towards the acidic region so in normal individual actually what happens there are different mechanism which try to compensate which try to compensate the decrease in the pH of the blood by different buffer system but in conditions like the patient who are suffering from type 1 diabetes mellitus actually they often suffer from different other pathophysiological conditions basically this patient they often releases the ketone bodies in such a large quantity that the normal ph buffering mechanism whatever it is present in their body it won't work actually now this reduced ph whatever it has formed or whatever it has come due to the production of this ketone bodies this reduced ph in combination with other metabolic abdom abnormalities for example which are associated with lack of insulin in diabetic ketoacidosis it actually becomes a life threatening step in the acute disorder of type 1 diabetes i repeat actually the patient who were suffering from type 1 diabetes in them this condition they reduce ph moreover if the compensating mechanism they are not working properly in their body along with that lack of insulin this lack of insulin may far further it can stimulate the ketoacidosis and which actually becomes sometimes a life threatening event for a patient suffering from the diabetes or type 1 diabetes mellitus in most cases the increase in the ketone body concentration in the blood is due to the increased synthesis in the liver i repeat in most cases the increase in ketone body concentration in the blood it is due to the increased synthesis in the liver in severe ketosis ketoacidosis in severe ketoacidosis the cell begin to lose the ability to again i repeat in severe ketoacidosis the cell of the body the cell begin to lose ability to use ketone bodies also now what are the conditions which are going to regulate the process of ketogenesis the first condition it is the substrate availability now what are the substrate for ketone bo ketone body production we all know that the fats so you see here increase ketogenesis occurs when it will occur when the substrate amount is high that's increased ketogenesis it occurs when you have excess availability of fatty acids for the oxidation process this increased ketogenesis occurs during generally during the time of starvation or the patient who are suffering from diabetic mellitus the second condition which regulates the ketogenesis it is the regulation of beta oxidation we know we have studied the beta oxidation in fats so now what or how it actually controls you see here the increased glucagon increased glucagon and decreased insulin the fasting condition in the fasting condition the glucagon it increases to meet up the requirement of the glucose in the body right so the increased glucagon and decreased insulin the fasting it results in inhibition of acetyl coenzyme a carboxylase enzyme and this results in decrease in melonyl coenzyme a moreover the decreased melonyl coenzyme a it results in increased beta oxidation of the fat or fatty acid which actually the activation of carnitine palmitoyl transferase 1 which regarding this function i have already given you presentation in my previous class 
the third condition it is the availability of ATP now how ATP it is going to control simply increase beta oxidation results in more production of ATP through the citric acid cycle which is generally done in the liver this results in increased availability of acetyl coenzyme A for ketogenesis and lastly the induction of HMG coenzyme A synthase it's an enzyme I have already told you so how it is going to induce just see here the HMG CoA synthase it is the rate limiting enzyme in the process of ketogenesis now the synthesis of actually this HMG coenzyme A synthase is stimulated by fasting condition when the person he is under starvation or fasting it gets stimulated increase intake of fat and diabetes mellitus also induce this HMG coenzyme A synthase now the fatty acid are strong inducer of HMG coenzyme A synthase thus the increased synthesis of enzyme occurs by increased transcription so now basically regulation of ketogenesis there are four physiological condition where the ketogenesis process it occur firstly first one it is the substrate level high amount of the fatty acid next one is the beta regulation of beta oxidation where we have already come across the beta oxidation next is the atp availability availability and lastly it is the induction of hmg coenzyme a synthase So now utilization of ketone bodies so this is the diagram you can see here the product d3d hydroxybutyrate so how it is actually utilized so actually what happens many tissues can utilize the ketone bodies but the notable exception is that liver right the conversion of this d3 hydroxybutyrate and acetoacetate back to acetyl coenzyme a it involves actually the enzyme 3 oxo acid coenzyme A transferase and acetoacetyl coenzyme A thiolase. I repeat the two enzymes 3 oxo acid coenzyme A transferase and acetoacetyl coenzyme A thiolase. Thus, the equilibrium of transferase reaction is in favor of the acetoacetate, but that of the thiolase reaction is towards the acetyl coenzyme A. You can see in the figure, right? Thus, the linking of the two reactions overcomes the unfavorable equilibrium of the transferase reaction. D3-hydroxybutyrate D3-hydroxybutyrate is metabolized by conversion to acetoacetate which is actually catalyzed by D3 hydroxybutyrase dehydrogenase and then via reaction pathway outlined previously to yield acetyl coenzyme A. Now let's discuss the interrelation with carbohydrate metabolism in ketone body. So, what is the interrelation between these two? So, you should know one thing the interrelation between sugar oxidation and ketone bodies formation it totally lies in the fact that in the pathological condition like diabetes mellitus and starvation the glycogen content of the liver it becomes very low i repeat when a person he is suffering from diabetes mellitus or if the person is under the condition of fasting or starvation the glycogen content of the liver it comes very low now to meet the energy requirement of the body the body should utilize some other non-carbohydrate source right so what actually happens then since these two conditions in these two conditions actually the fatty acids are not sterified the, in this both condition means diabetes mellitus and starvation the fatty acids are not esterified and the ketone bodies are formed in these conditions the energy requirement of the body now will be met 
whatever the energy the body is now requiring it will be met by the oxidation of the fat now the body is going to use the fat instead of the carbohydrate for this reason the fat are to be used the fats are actually transported or they are actually coming up from the adipose tissue in the large quantity the adipose tissue are the fat storing tissue which are present in our body so from the adipose tissue the fats they will now start coming out and they will be brought to the liver now this liver actually it becomes fatty or you can say the liver it becomes loaded with fats consequently the fat oxidation it takes place at a very high rate and more ketone bodies are formed during that state and the cell actually they start using these fats as a source of energy now they came out of the cell and enter the blood stream and finally these ketone bodies once they will come out of the cell they will enter the bloodstream now they will be eliminated eliminated they will be now thrown out from the body via the urine the ketone bodies are formed at a faster rate then it can be utilized that's the most important thing you remember one thing the ketone bodies whatever it is formed in the body they are formed at a very faster rate then can be utilized means their utilization process is slow but their formation process is very high hence the ketosis may not be even due to non-utilization of the ketone bodies but it is due to their overproduction due to the overproduction of the ketone bodies a person generally suffer from ketosis because the ketone body production is actually goes very high now ketogenic and anti-ketogenic ratio if somebody he is going to plan out the diet for any person suppose a person is suffering from ketosis or a person he is suffering from diabetes mellitus the diet of the person need to be planned so how you are going to do it so while prescribing the diet the proportion of ketogenic as well as anti-ketogenic substances means ketogenic substances means generally the fats are considered as the ketogenic substances it should be regulated so that so that how the ketosis it may not, it can be avoided so it is generally found that the ratio between the molecules of ketogenic substance i repeat the ratio between the molecules of ketogenic suppose the numerator it is the amount of the ketogenic substances in the denominator you can put the amount of the anti-ketogenic substances if the ratio it exceeds two if the ratio it exceeds two means numerator if the amount of the ketogenic substances it is more in the denominator if the amount of the non-ketogenic substances it is less and if the resultant it becomes two then this ketone body start appearing in the urine so for safer side we follow one rule it's a simple clinical rule that the total fat f contained in the diet if a person is suffering from this sort of pathophysiological condition his diet to be designed in such a way that the total fat f in the diet must not exceed the sum twice the carbohydrate means c here it is the amount of the carbohydrate p it is the protein means the sum of carbohydrate 2 into the amount of carbohydrate plus half into amount of protein whatever the amount it comes it should be less than it should be sorry it should be greater than the amount of fat it should be greater than the amount of fat so now let's discuss the physiological ketosis so all the methods and the procedures we are going to discuss now the so first of all whenever we are going to follow a overnight fast at that time what actually happened if you are in the fasting state the glucose produced by the liver it will be utilized by the tissue as an obligatory requirement for glucose as a measure for it, right now the next day at this state what actually happens or 
over the night what actually happens at this stage the tissue like skeletal muscles which are in our body the skeletal muscles now they are going to use the non esterified fatty acid it is also known as nepha the skeletal muscles now they are going to use the nepha as the major fuel supply instead of the glucose I repeat, instead of the glucose, these skeletal muscles, they are going to use the NAFA as the major fuel supply. So now this muscle NAFA oxidation, when they are going to get oxidized, they causes the decrease in glucose uptake and subsequently the glucose metabolism by the muscle cells and glucose transport across the muscle cells membrane it get decreased so when the after the process of overnight fast when the muscles they start utilizing the nepha as a main sources of energy at that time what actually happens the transport of glucose or utilization of the glucose in the skeletal muscle cells they becomes completely decreased or they stopped at that state actually the plasma glucose concentration may fall significantly I repeat the plasma glucose concentration may fall significantly with the concomitant increase in the plasma fatty acid and ketone bodies to about five folds and 20 fold respectively after this process what will happen the glucose concentra concentration it will come down whereas there will be an increase in the plasma fatty acid and ketone bodies and this increase may be up to five fold and 20 fold respectively as more than 99 percent i repeat as more than 99 percent of the plasma fatty acid they remain complex with the albumin albumin it's a protein you know so as more than 99 percent of the plasma fatty acid they are now complex with the albumin very little is free to diffuse into the interstitial spaces I repeat once again as 99% of the plasma fatty acid they are now complex or they generally complex with the albumin it's a protein of the blood it's found in the plasma so now very little amount of the fatty acid they are able to diffuse through the interstitial space limiting their utilization by the tissue so now however the country the ketone bodies they are actually soluble in the aqueous medium right and the concentration in the interstitial fluid will be now comparable with that in the plasma approximately the concentration it will be more uh, approximately around two to three mole per liter during the prolonged fasting state as the condition of the glucose in the interstitial fluid under this condition may be around four to five millimolar per liter the ketone bodies are oxidized in preference to glucose and the free fatty acids and sparing glucose for use by the brain and central nervous system and lastly the pancreatic beta cells they remain responsive to the plasma nutrient concentration and they actually facilitate the maintenance of the plasma fatty acid concentration such as the such as actually the plasma ketone concentration does not usually rise to such an extent that the ketone bodies are excreted in the urine now the pathological ketosis so iddm insulin dependent diabetes mellitus it is the probably known as the best disease which is associated with life threatening ketosis if it is not treated with insulin therapy the under all the alteration of the insulin to glucagon ratio so in a diabetic patient actually there is an alteration right between these two hormones they have a significant effect on the metabolism of the liver and other tissue the increased relative or absolute levels of the glucagon increases the rate of lipolysis in the adipose tissue which we are discussing from the previous slide resulting in the increased circulating levels of the free fatty acids the liver respond to this alteration after this alteration of the balance they the liver it respond to this alteration in the insulin to glucagon ratio by increasing the glucose synthesis and release 
as insulin stimulated glucose uptake by the extra hepatic tissue is decreased i repeat as insulin stimulated glucose uptake by hepat extra hepatic tissue is decreased the circulating glucose concentration increases and hyperglycemia it occurs the lipid and the glycogen synthesis are inhibited and there is increased oxidation of fatty acids being delivered to the liver in physiological ketosis there is a regulated release of fatty acid from the adipose tissue allowing tight regulation of the plasma ketone body concentration i repeat again in physiological ketosis there is a regulated release of fatty acid from the adipose tissue allowing a tight regulation of the plasma ketone body concentration so now let's discuss the metabolic acidosis so what is metabolic acidosis how it occurs what are the consequences of keto ketosis how the acidic urine it is formed and different aspects so first of all the metabolic acidosis it is generally caused by decrease in concentration of bicarbonate ion in the plasma i already told you that during the time of the formation of a ketone bodies most of the ketone bodies they are generally buffered by the buffered system present in the plasma but metabolic acidosis occurs when there is a decrease in the concentration of the bicarbonate ions in the plasma with little or no change in the carbonic acid concentration moreover the condition is frequently associated with uncontrolled insulin dependent diabetic mellitus where it is caused by the presence of high plasma concentration of ketone bodies so actually the two prime ketone bodies the acetoacetate and the three hydroxybutyrate are relatively strong acid and this is strong acid upon dissociation in the plasma they give rise to the formation of the protein and corresponding anion now this proton this proton which are formed from the dissociation of the ketone bodies now this cation they are effectively buffered by the plasma bicarbonate to give the carbonic acid now this carbonic acid which will further get breakdown into carbon dioxide and water in the human body now when the amount of the ketone bodies it increases in the body right the amount of proton which has been formed from the dissociation of these ketone bodies they will also keep going on increasing gradually and gradually the ph of the blood it will come down towards the acidic side the buffer system they will stop during that time what actually happens as the carbon dioxide they are also producing or they are producing in a huge amount in the body immediately the body respond to the high concentration of the carbon dioxide and it stimulates the respiratory center leading to a rapid and deep breathing so that the lung can excrete out this excess of the carbon dioxide from the body now as the kidney is this the major organ responsible for maintenance of the acid base balance this kidney it also employed to help actually it corrects the imbalance caused by the presence of the ketone body so how it helps again in the metabolic acidosis the anionic component we come to know that these ketone bodies they are giving a cationic component that is the proton and an anionic, anionic component this anionic component of the dissociated ketone bodies now they are filtered in the kidney now each we take cation so they are exchange this anionic component they are exchanged with a cation specifically the sodium ion thus maintaining the electrical neutrality in the body the renal tubular cells they generally secrete this proton into the filtrate the renal tubular cells they will now secrete the proton proton into the filtrate while reabsorbing one sodium ion and one bicarbonate ion for each of the protons they are secreting the energy dependent proton carrier in the tubular cells are capable of secreting against the concentration gradient until the ph of the urine becomes approximately 4.5 i repeat the energy dependent proton carrier which is present in the tubular cells they are capable of secreting the proton against the concentration gradient against the concentration gradient when 
the urine becomes acidic about 800 times more acidic than that of the plasma which is approximately 4.5 the pH of the urine will become 4.5 then at this point at this particular point the concentration gradient becomes too great for the secretory process to continue I repeat when the pH of the urine it becomes 4.5 the concentration gradient, whatever it has produced due to the proton, it becomes too great for the secretory process to continue. For further secretion of the proton by these cells, kidney cells, there are the <coughs> so for further processing this proton secretion to proceed, the majority of the secreted proton must be buffered into the tubular fluid. And this is achieved by the first instance by the phosphate so this phosphate now it will play its role so how it's going to play the role the phosphate is present in a urine we all know that the phosphate is present in the urine as a result of dietary excess right the buffering capacity of the urine phosphate is quickly exceeded in severe acidosis i repeat the buffering capacity the phosphate is a it can act as a buffer right the buffering capacity of the phosphate is quickly exceed in severe acidosis under these conditions what will happen now the tubular cells secrete ammonia right which now combines with the previously secreted proton to form nh4 right now in this way large amount of the proton can be extracted into urine i repeat by this way by combination of the ammonia with the proton forming the nh4 large amount of the proton can be extracted into the urine before the concentration becomes gradient becomes too large for the sensory mechanism to operate and when the acid load is very high for example in diabetic acidosis it occurs and the filter contain or i repeat when the acid load is very high in case of diabetic acidosis then the filtered cations are lost the filtered cations are lost i repeat the filtered cations those cations they are now lost along with the ketone bodies in the urine actually the concomitant electrolyte and water losses lead to dehydration hypovolemia moreover hypotension and subsequent death in case of the patient suffering from IDDM. Now, the relation of ketosis with blood and urine reaction. So, first of all, we know that during the ketosis, acetoacetic acid, beta hydroxy beta acid, all these are formed, right? Now, since all these are whatever they are from since all these are acid ketosis is usually associated with the condition of acidosis generation of acidosis in the body which we have already discussed so it can lower the ph of the blood right moreover it can increase the acidity of the urine now due to this relationship actually between the acidosis and ketosis acetone bodies these acetone bodies are generally found in highly acidic urine Due to this relationship, I repeat again, due to this relationship between acidosis and ketosis, acetone bodies are generally found in highly acidic urine. Now, a large part of the acid in the urine exists as anions. We have already discussed. They exist as anions. Now, for maintenance of the neutrality, right, the cations like sodium are lost as a result of as a result this sodium salts are lost from the plasma and other body fluids and consequently consequently there is a loss of body fluid resulting in the dehydration during the time of acidosis now it is highly interesting that even in genuine cases of the alkalosis if a person is suffering from alkalosis with alkaline urine ketone bodies may be found in the urine too again now you see Discuss this particular condition, it can be demonstrated in patient in which actually the experimental alkalosis is produced by prolonged voluntary hyperponia, right? It is probable that in this condition actually the beta hydroxybutyric acid, acetoacetic acid, etc. These are the ketones body, right? They actually it is 
probable reason. It might be a probable reason in alkalosis actually. Actually, they might migrate out of the cells to neutralize the alkalis and somehow they might be excreted in the urine. That's a postulation, means there's a, that's a hypothesis actually. Now, the last part of the discussion that is your diabetic ketoacidosis. So, diabetic ketoacidosis is a very serious condition or complication which is very common in diabetic patients, right? They have high levels of blood acids. And these are the ketone bodies, right? The condition develops when the patient, their body cannot produce enough insulin. We don't know all this. Now, without this insulin, for production of energy, the body starts using the fat as a fuel. And this process actually, it produces a buildup of acid in the bloodstream called the ketones. And eventually it leads to diabetic ketoacidosis if that is or if that particular condition if it is untreated now diabetic ketoacidosis the signs and symptoms often develop quickly the signs and symptoms of diabetic ketoacidosis is it, it very often it develops very quickly maybe sometimes within 24 hours so what are the symptoms what are the symptoms of the diabetic acidosis so basically the symptoms first symptoms is excessive thirst the patient may suffer from excessive thirst right frequent urination right moreover nausea and vomiting abdominal pain weakness or the patient may suffer from fatigue shortness of breath and fruity scented breath moreover confusion now sugar it is the main source of energy for all cells we know that that make up our or your muscles and other tissues normally insulin it helps the sugar to enter in our cells or your cells right now basically actually without enough insulin in case of IDDM the body can't use the sugar properly for production of energy and this prompt the release actually it prompts the release of the hormones that break down the fat as a fuel so instead of in the general sugar number the body will start using the fat as a fuel which will produce the acids known as the ketones and this excess of the ketones build up in the body or in the blood and eventually they spill over into the urine actually this excess of the ketones what is whatever it is formed in the blood they are finally spill over the urine so this is all from diabetic ketosis acidosis so lastly thank you everyone for your patience hearing i hope i could have somehow able to make you understand regarding the formation and utilization of ketone bodies in human body moreover the concept of ketoacidosis now if you like my video you can press this button moreover you can share this video with your classmates for a better understanding and for further notification from my channel you can press this bell icon thank you once again